we interrupt your lunch hour to bring you the news making headlines within and beyond the borders of Namibia. In the news today, appeal against the refusal of bail for Michael Amushelelo and Dimbulukeni Naoyoma said to be argued before High Court. Parliament's investigation of Recon Africa oil exploration cites questionable practices and flagrant disregard for regulations. Tourism Forum was launched in Omutia. Good news for dire situation in Sand Group. At least 600 inmates have escaped in a jailbreak in Abuja, Nigeria's capital city. I am Diana Master and this is Animated One, bringing you community stories, the latest news updates, sports and economic news. In today's midday news update, the appeal against the refusal of bail for Michael Amushelelo and Dimbulukeni Naoyoma is said to be argued before High Court Judges Christy Liebenberg and Judge Dina Usiko on 29 July 2022, their lawyers confirmed. In May, the Katutura Magistrates Court denied the paid bail, a decision they are now appealing. In another update, if you love cricket, tap into your creativity and you stand a chance to win a ticket to Australia to support the Eagles later this year. All you have to do is design the shirt they will be playing in. Quite exciting news. Here's Yolanda Nell with more. If you still want to design the World Cup shirt worn by the Capricorn Eagles during their tournament in Australia later this year, then you better hurry up because entries close on Friday. All you have to do is to download the Design Your World Cup t-shirt template on Cricket Namibia homepage, send your front and back shirt designs with your contact details and post your design to Twitter or Facebook with the hashtag Design Our World Cup shirt. Not only will the Eagles be playing in your design shirt, but there are amazing prizes up for grabs. This includes a single return airline ticket to support the team in Australia. Or, if that's not your style, you can also walk away with a full IXU top range set of cricket equipment or a family of four weekend away for two days at the Dome in Swakopmund, which includes accommodation and breakfast. But hurry up, your chances to enter this competition is only until the 8th of July. Get designing! Now do not hesitate to engage us on our social media platforms and leave your thoughts in the comments as we share stories from local communities on the other side of this short break in our visual news segment. Now starting off our visual news, on Tuesday this week, Chairman of the Standing Committee on Natural Resources, Chekero Tweya, delivered a scathing report after an investigation of Recon Africa oil exploration in the Kavango. He cited a flagrant disregard for regulations, receiving consent after the fact, questionable practices and not benefiting the state while generating share value from the Namibian resources. This clip is from the Parliament of Namibia. The table of Namkor. Honorable Deke, by now. When do you go? Don't disturb people who yeah. want to. The value of the 10% if Namkor was participating genuinely, the 10% of Namkor by 27th of July would have been 87 million, for which they have got zero now. Just the 10%. Whereas the 90% is over 877 million. All, meaning both these figures go to one party and Namco still gets zero. Now the committee's observation in conclusion of this particular aspect of Namco, the percentage shareholding by Namco is negotiated by the Ministry of Mines and Energy with the investing companies. There is no policy or regulation governing the shareholding structure. Therefore, the committee sees and found no rationale as to which criteria was used by the ministry to determine the 10% shareholding awarded to Namco. Yeah, yeah, the 
second observation, I mean, no, the, the committee was concerned that Recon Africa, based on the rise of its shares at the stock exchange, is raising money by using Namibian resources, while Namco's 10% shareholding is not worth anything. And the last observation, the lack of a policy to guide the ministry in its negotiations with companies deprived the government from getting improved deals in shareholding and is done in conflict with Article 100 of the Namibian Constitution. Are you done now? Can we not proceed to tomorrow? With Namco. Honorable uh, Member. Can, can we stop there and you can see tomorrow? A tourism forum was launched in Umutia earlier this week. Tunole Mugoba was there. Sylvie Hepembe, the executive director of the Ministry of Environment and Tourism, earlier this week spoke at the launch of the Oshikoto Regional Tourism Forum at Umutia. At the same event, the forum appointed 13 members to the executive committee. The purpose of the forum is for stakeholders in the tourism economy of the Oshikoto region to revive the tourism industry and collaborate with the ministry and the regional council. term of office for this for the members is six years. So the the, the the ministry will also endeavor to facilitate those appointments to ensure continuity and sustainability. Uh, individual may may be withdrawn um, or may resign themselves um, for justified or personal reasons and then yeah, membership will be terminated upon a written notification to the chairperson or the secretariat. Namibian Sun recently reported on the dire situation that a group of 80 Sun find themselves in. Thankfully, there is a bit of good news. This clip was contributed. Let's have a look. Thomas Pulangi, Regional Development Planner for Marginalized Communities in the Ohangwena region, recently handed over blankets to 80 Sun persons living at Indobe Village in the Okongu constituency. The donation came from Vice President Nangolo Mbumba, who in his personal capacity gave $10,000 to the community after Namibian Sun reported last week that the group was freezing, sleeping on thin mattresses, with some having no blankets to keep warm from the cold weather. They pleaded with Good Samaritans to come to their rescue. <laughs> when Peter Kirk is the owner of Aquafish Trader, who has a pop up fish shop in Oshuarongo once a month, here he shares a short interview with Desiree Hassis. Let's take a look. My name is Bobby, I'm the founder of Aquafish Trader. We are based in, in uh, Swakopmund. And we do once on the end of the month, we do a, a round trip to the north, starting in Karbop. Uh, usually on the end of the month, uh, we sell fish. So we sell some uh, cabalio, the old small one, like this one. Um, we all put them on a scale. Uh, we have cabalio cutlets, it's a big one that is cut into pieces to make it uh, affordable for everyone. And then we also sell snook, like that. Um, it's a, it's a mark your suit, it's li lightly salted, ready for cut to pieces, you know, to, to fry or to dry. Mm. Um, we try and make a, a lot of small portions, you know, to make everything uh, for 
platform of everyone that is a hate from the big Kavalio, um, that we don't, uh, the, 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 the rest of, of the cutlets, you know, that we put in there, okay? Mm -hmm. um, usually, on the end of the month, we come here at one spot, across Boerman Brook, uh, on the corner here yeah, next to the robot selling fish uh, to the public everybody uh, we, we are as visible as we can be um, uh, marked with fi uh, fish for sale so yeah that's it now when we return we'll be taking a look at the news headlining Namibia's daily print publications but first a quick trip to the marketplace My.na Property Show provides viewers with the best in class content, engaging interviews as well as a showcase of the latest property related products and services. If you would like to feature your brand or your campaign on this platform, contact my.na at synergy.com.na. My.na Properties, more than just a roof over your head. Thank you for staying with Animated One. Now, let's take a look at what the lead stories are in Namibia's daily newspapers. Starting off with the Namibian Sun front page, former Vintic Mayor Job Amupanda has told City of Vintic acting CEO O'Brien Hakanjo to be careful of being used in corrupt activities. This follows an instruction last week that Hekanjo must restart the process of recruiting a substantial CEO for going into elections. It's a useless task. It's not going to succeed, the IPC leader said at a rally in Rundu recently. Now moving over to the Republican, this year maize farmers will rewrite the record books with a bumper harvest of 94,437 tons, reports the Republican, the biggest maize harvest in Namibia's history. At the same time, national silos seem to be filled to the brim. This has forced some farmers in the maize triangle to take a break from their harvesting activities until the silos at Otavi regains the capacity to take in more maize. This year looks like a record harvest of almost 95,000 tons. This puts pressure on everyone to deliver the maize because silos in Namibia have limited space, said Mr. Gerard Engelbrecht of the Agronomy Producers Association. This year's harvest expected to top last year's record of 90,800 and 95 tons, which was in itself an all-time record high for Namibia. On its page 3 of the Republican, Parliament chastises Recon Africa, according to Republican, which reports that in Parliament on Tuesday, the chairman on the stand, of the Standing Committee on Natural Resources, Chekero Twea, delivered a scathing report after investigation of Recon Africa's oil exploration in the Kavango, citing district guard for regulations, getting consent after the fact, questionable practices and not benefiting the state while generating share value from Namibian resources. Although the lawmakers have not advised that Recon Africa's exploration be stopped, the Canadian listed company must pay fines and its further activities should be closely watched. Now, the Algamina Sai Tung in its lead story reports that over the next three years, Sasco aims to make all the compiled datasets quickly and accurately available to the public in the broadest sense, stating at, starting at the policy level and ending with the farmer. It is all about the four river basins and their wetlands in the member states of the Southern African Development Community and about their optimal use and due protection. On its page 3, Algabana Taitung also reports that, as expected in advance by critics, environmentalists and activists, the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Natural Resources found Recon Africa's oil exploration in the Kavango region to be okay in their final report. In its report, the committee is quite casual about complaints. We're now going to take a quick ad break and when we return, we take a look at what's headlining the Namibian newspaper. Stay with us. Sunset News is a daily news show focusing on national headlines as well as international news. If you'd like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, please contact sunset at synergy.com.na. Sunset News. Don't end your day without us.
Now getting into the second half of our newspaper review, the Namibian newspaper reports that two men detained in the Vinter Correctional Facility while standing trial in the High Court have filed a case in which they claim that the, that the police and prison authorities are violating a range of their human rights and should permit them to receive conjugal visits and, and poses partly naked pictures in prison. The allegations made by American murder accused Kevan Townsend and ex-magistrate Yaku Kennedy was facing rape and kidnapping charges include complaints that the prison authorities are violating their right to freedom of expression and claims that the police are unreasonably refusing their request for conjugal or private family visits. On its page 3, the Namibian reports that the city of Vintuk has denied terminating the contracts of interns after popu popular democratic movement parliamentarian Maximilian Kashimune posed questions to the Minister of Labour, Industrial Relations and Employment Creation Utoni Nyoma on alleged exploitation. City spokesperson Harold Akwenye said the end date of the contracts had already been determined in January as end of June this year and the event was unrelated to Kashimune's question to the minister. Kachimune claimed that interns are left to take up the bulk of the work that permanent employees are supposed to perform on measly allowances of 3,500 Namibian dollars to 3,700 Namibian dollars monthly. Now on the New Era front page, it reports that government is cashing in on 77 million Namibian dollars in rental fees between 2019 and 2021 from renting out buildings, according to an audit report. Through the Department of Works under the auspices of the Works of and Transport Ministry, which is the custodian of government properties, the state also generated over a hundred thousand Namibian dollars from leasing parking spaces to various institutions in the country. On his page three, the chairperson of the City of Vindex Management Committee, Ndeshi Hafela Laranja, has maintained the resolution to annul the recruitment process for the CEO position stands as the process was relative with irregularities, according to the New Era. Now, according to Market Watch, Namibia's direct investment inflows during the first quarter of 2022 stood at 1.2 billion Namibian dollars, a decline when compared to an inflow of 2.1 billion Namibian dollars registered during the corresponding quarter of 2021. Similarly, when compared to 3.7 billion Namibian dollars recorded in the final quarter of 2021, direct investment inflows declined by 2.5 billion Namibian dollars, according to the Bank of Namibia quarterly bulletin. The annual fall in foreign direct investment inflows was due to lower intercompany loans granted to domestic subsidiaries in the mining sector with 381 million Namibian dollars during the review period compared to 1.6 billion Namibian dollars reported a year ago, the central bank pointed out. Now, Namibia's SMEs have looked to data-driven tools to drive growth. More on this when we return. In Business 7, you get news on current economic, financial and business matters in Namibia. The weekly show features interviews with experts and in-depth analysis of burning issues in a way that caters for ordinary Namibians and business connoisseurs alike. We crunch the numbers that matter, decipher statistics that shape Namibian lives, discuss smart money and explore the impact of global development locally. Money makes the world go round, so catch us on NTV, 1up2.com, and the Facebook platforms of the Namibian Sun, Republic Kane, Algomina Taitung, and Namibia Media Holdings. For news related or advertising queries, please contact b7 at synergy.com.na. In today's economic news, Namibian small and mid-sized enterprises are increasingly looking to grow their businesses internationally and access new markets to mitigate the effects of a global economic slowdown and ensure sustainable and inclusive economic growth, says TransUnion Namibia country manager Lara Berger. According to the Labour Resource and Research Institute of Namibia, the SME sector has become a booming area of the Namibian economy. They provide an estimated 60,000 full-time jobs, which makes it a very significant sector in terms of employment creation. Its potential for employment creation seems even larger than that of Namibia's large business sector due to its labour-intensive nature and its use of local resources. 
However, according to IGI Global, the general reduction in the supply of labor, disruptions of supply chains, sudden loss of demand and revenue by COVID-19 pandemic have negatively affected SMEs, leading to their inability to operate normally, causing liquid liquidity constraint. Database tools are, pro are proving to be a key driver of the growing trend of SMEs expanding beyond Namibia's borders into the region and globally, says Rafi Kotler, head of Commercial Bureau Solutions at TransUnion Africa. Local SMEs' ability to access data on global markets was boosted last year by a partnership between TransUnion Africa and global commercial data company Dun & Bradstreet, which gives SMEs access to two key Dun and Bradstreet services, DNB Hovers and Data Vision. Hovers is a web based lead prospecting tool that allows companies to build local and global pipelines, and Data Vision helps companies assess markets and develop entry strategies through powerful data analytics. South African farmers may resort to planting fewer crops as persistent load shedding disrupts planting schedules and spiraling fuel prices make it more expensive to undertake daily farming operations. This is according to AgriSA Executive Director Christoph van der Riede, who believes that the current challenges faced by the country's food producers could have serious repercussions not only for the sector but for the food security too. With ESCOM placing the entire country on a power supply roster, farmers, especially those who are dependent on the national grid, are left unable to use pumping stations, irrigation cooling and other systems which are critical to their operations, explained Reed. Farmers are already reporting huge losses as processing machinery, irrigation equipment and other machinery are damaged and come to a standstill due to power outages, he adds. Load shedding has also hit farmers hard in terms of trading with retailers as they struggle to maintain these working relationships. According to Reed, retailers are rejecting fresh produce from farmers due to delivery delays caused by ESCOM's power cuts. Senior agricultural economist at FNB Agribusiness Paul Makube echoed some Reed's sentiments, adding that mounting cost pressures for producers in the sector may end up forcing some out of the industry. And now let's take a look at the economic indicators. The Namibian dollar's value is up when weighed against the US dollar, while its value against these other major currencies remains unchanged. No new changes on the NSX, with stock prices remaining unchanged. Namibia Brewery stock prices remain at 40 Namibian dollars. NSX stock prices remain unchanged according to available data, while overall index has increased by 0.51%. Brent crude oil prices are up by 1.49%, while zinc will now cost 0.20% more. Now at least 600 inmates have escaped in a jailbreak in Abuja, Nigeria's capital city. The full story coming up after the break. You're still watching Animated One. We now take a look at the latest news in our neighboring countries and later on extend to the rest of the globe. Starting off, at least 600 inmates have escaped in a jailbreak in Abuja, Nigeria's capital city, an attack that officials have blamed on Islamic extremist rebels. Nigeria's Ministry of Interior said explosions and gunfire were heard at around 10 p.m. in the Kuja area when the attackers arrived and forced their way into the prison through a hole created by the blasts. Permanent Secretary of Nigeria's Ministry of Interior, Shubaib Bogore, said the very determined rebels attacked the Kuja Maximum Prison in Abuja on Tuesday night with very high-grade explosives, killing one guard on duty. 
Nigeria's Jihadi rebels and other armed groups have carried out several jailbreaks in the country's northeast in the recent years, but this is the first recorded in the capital city. BBC further reports that at least over 4,300 inmates have escaped from the country's prisons since 2017. In 2021, more than 2,500 inmates were freed in three jailbreaks. Suspected Boko Haram militants are among 436 inmates on the run after gunmen from the extremist group attacked a prison outside the Nigerian capital, Abuja, government officials say. Some 879 detainees escaped after Tuesday night's attack, but 443 of them have been recaptured, Umar Abu Bakr, a spokesman for the Correctional Service, has said. In our next story, residents of a town in Ethiopia's northern Tigray region are still searching for missing bodies after heavy rain and flooding killed at least 10 people last week. Residents of Selekla, a town in northwest Tigray, say the search is continuing amid fears that the death toll could rise. Teame Walder Gabriel, a resident of the town, told the BBC that the 10 bodies recovered had already been buried. He said the town had been swamped and many people swept away in the June 26 incident. The flood destroyed shops at the market site. Everyone there was also swept away by the floods. Those are other, there are others whose bodies haven't been found, Teami said. Other residents told the BBC that the heavy floods had destroyed homes, markets and crops. Guesh Aragai said he was the only one to have survived out of the dozens of people who were at Selekleka market during the flooding incident. We were 25 people altogether. I'm the only survivor. The rest were swept away by the flood. Two mothers who were here in the market were swept away with their children. He said though he had survived, he has lost everything. Now, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Rwanda have agreed to a de-escalation process following weeks of rising tensions over rebel fighting in eastern DRC, the Congolese presidency said Wednesday after mediated talks. But the talks mediator, Angolan President Wao Lorenko, went further announcing a ceasefire, although giving no details. Violence has flared between the Congolese army and the M23 rebels and is ongoing. The DRC has repeatedly accused Rwanda of backing the M23, a charge the small Central Afri African country has always denied. Chisekedi's office has said a roadmap had been established towards normalizing diplomatic ties, including through ending hostilities involving the M23 militia in eastern DRC. The announcements came after day-long talks, which the Rwandan state broadcaster reported had concluded with an agreed-upon roadmap to de-escalate hostilities. But the Rwanda Broadcasting Agency stressed that it was agreed that the issue of M23 be dealt with domestically within the framework of the Nairobi process. Now China has suspended two health officials in a southern county for ignoring the case of a baby boy who was allegedly abducted from his parents. This story and more international news coming up on the other side of this break. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, welcome to another exciting edition. Starting off our international news segment, China has suspended two health officials in a southern county for ignoring the case of a baby boy who was allegedly abducted from his parents by local officials in the 1990s. His parents recently petitioned police in the Guangxi province to investigate, but a local health bureau refused to look into the case, saying he'd been taken away due to social reallocation under China's former one-child policy. Many online were critical of the strict rules under the one-child policy at the time, calling the incident a blatant case of human trafficking. 
Earlier this week, a letter from the local health bureau in Quanzhou County went viral on Chinese social media written in response to a couple's request for an investigation to be opened into the case of their seventh child whom they suspected had been abducted in the 1990s. The, police had called for, the couple had called for police to look into a group of local former officials. According to local news outlets, the parents said they, ne they had never stopped looking for their child and had sent numerous complaints to various government departments. On 1 July, the local health bureau replied and said an investigation would not be conducted as the child had not been abducted but taken away by the then authorities for social reallocation. The authority also added there was no record of the whereabouts of children who were reallocated for the convenience of family planning work rolled, ac rolled out across the country, according to state media outlet The Global Times. In an interview with news site Kaishin, the child's mother claimed that the family had already paid some fines to their local official for having more than one child, yet her child was taken away despite this. Now, Ukraine says it is investigating more than 21 war crimes and crimes of aggression allegedly committed by Russia since the start of its invasion. Prosecutor General Iryana Venediktova told the BBC she was receiving reports of between 200 to 300 war crimes a day. She admitted that many trials would be held in absentia, but stressed that it was a question of justice to continue with the prosecutions. Russia invaded Ukraine on 24 February. It denies all war crime allegations. Speaking to the BBC's World Service Outside Source program, Venediktova warned that Russian soldiers who killed, tortured or raped civilians should understand that it's only a question of time when they all will be in court. She said that although her team was working in regions across Ukraine, it was unable to investigate all cases properly and effectively because of a lack of access to some people and some areas. In May, Ms. Benediktova said that about 600 suspects had already been identified and 80 prosecutions had begun. Ukraine says it has uncovered multiple mass graves in some towns near the capital, Kyiv, that were briefly seized by Russian troops. The International Criminal Court has described Ukraine as a crime scene, dispatching its largest team of detectives ever to the country to assist in multiple investigations. Moscow has repeatedly denied targeting civilians. We're now going to take a quick ad break and move on over to local sports. Stay with us. AgriMonitor is jouw wekelijkse landbouwkundige program wat jou die jongste nies in die landbouwverwante bedrijf en onderwerpe wat daar aan gekoppel is brang. Vir enige advertentie of niesverwante navra, kontak agrimonitor at synergy.com.na Now only one last hurdle now remains between Namibia and its seventh consecutive World Cup appearance in the Rugby Africa final on Sunday night against the Kenya team whose forwards looked very vulnerable against Algeria's onslaught before surviving 36-33. to Namibia beat Zimbabwe 34-19 in the semi-finals of the Africa Cup of Nations qualifying World Cup match in ice en province in France last night. The FIFA Normalization Committee has come under scrutiny this week for having struggled to settle old debts while allegedly compensating the current Brave Warriors team that is left for Kosafa. Sources who choose to remain anonymous criticize the committee's decision to send a team to Kosafa in the midst of the Namibian Football Association's financial, financial situation. NC chairperson Busy Uirab, however, rebuffed the allegations and said the Brave Warriors traveled on a sponsored purse. He said no money from the association's bleeding coffers was used. Namibia's son understands that the Brave Gladiators players and technical team are owed outstanding proceeds from last year's Kasafa tournament held in October. Now on our next story, free agent Maximilian Baeva says he is waiting for his agent to let him know what the way forward is after being released by the Golden Arrows. Baeva, who is currently in Johannesburg, South Africa, still remains optimistic about pinning a deal in South Africa. We're just notified about a week ago that all the players whose contracts have run out will not get new ones. Right now, I'm very hopeful that I will get a club here because I am an experienced goalkeeper who has served this club well, Mbaeva said. The former Brave Warriors number one has been part of the Arrows since making his debut for the club in August 2014. Zimbabwean kickboxer Walter Drago Chiteto says he wants a rematch with the newly crowned junior Desert Storm champion Hirukevi Muhipa. Drago lost the match against Muhipa, who defeated him on 
who defeated him on points during a three-round bout for the Junior Desert Storm Championship at Jan Wilken Indoor Sport Complex in Walvis Bay. The Zimbabwean claims he was forced to fight under full contact, which only allows hits above the belt. This, dis dis this derailed me as I was stripped of my artillery, knees and low kicks. I am a K1 fighter and in K1, using your knees, sweeps and low kicks are allowed. Now after the break, we're going to take a, a look at the news headlining the international sports scene. Sunset News is a daily news show focusing on national headlines as well as international news. If you'd like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, please contact sunset at synergy.com.na. Sunset News. Don't end your day without us. Now let's take a look at the international sports scene. Japan head coach Jamie Joseph said on Thursday that his team will have to play smarter in the second test against France after he made three cha changes to the side that collapsed in the second half against the Six Nations champions last week. France won the first test in Toyota 42-23 after scoring four tries in the second half, stretching away after a spirited Japan had held them a 13-13 at the interval. Cameroon have been held to a surprise 1-1 one -one draw by the debutantes Togo in their 2022 Women's Africa Cup of Nations Group B clash in Casablanca on Wednesday, the second draw of the competition for the number two ranked team on the continent. Following their goalless draw with Zambia in their opener, Cameroon had to this time come from behind to secure a point against a team considered the poor minnows, but who put up a spirited fight. Already qualified Zambia led the pool with four points from their two games, followed by Tunisia with three points. That means it is all to play for in the final round of matches on Saturday as Cameroon face Tunisia and Zambia meet Togo. We're now going to take a quick ad break and when we return, we take a look at the highlights from today's broadcast, just in case you missed them. I usually spend about $600 million for a full tank, which usually lasts me the entire month because I do not drive around that much. The longest stretch I've ever gone with my car is to come and yap, and that was for leisure purposes. The service at the Namco service station is excellent because when you get there, you're met by employees who are always ready to cater to you. Whether it's them fueling your car, checking your tire pressure, offering to wash your windscreen, or checking your engine oil. The one thing that makes me proudly Namibian is being able to experience Namibia in all its beauty through travel. You're watching Animated One, and if you have just joined us, here are your news highlights. At least 600 inmates have escaped in a jailbreak in Abuja, Nigeria's capital city. China has suspended two health officials in a southern county for ignoring the case of a baby boy who was allegedly abducted from his parents by local officials in the 1990s. Only one last hurdle now remains between Namibia and its seventh consecutive World Cup appearance in the Rugby Africa final on Sunday night against Kenya. Those have been your highlights. Thank you for staying with Animated One and spending your lunch hour with me, Diana Master. Remember to tune in every weekday at 1pm as we take you through the latest happenings in Namibia and beyond. But for now, stay with us for a compilation of news from across Namibia in our regional review segment. Good day viewers and welcome back to yet another episode of the Regional Review. My name is Desiree Gassis and I am the NMH correspondent for the Central North. Well today we are celebrating Macaroni Day. I think everybody and anybody definitely has some sort of a sentiment towards macaroni even if it was just having it with mac and cheese or however it is that you remember macaroni. But Without saying too much, stay tuned for the following video.
Wow viewers, thank you so much for staying tuned. Heading over straight into our new segment. First in our new segment, we were uh, at the Elytra Fruit and Veggie Shop, uh, which is a local fruit and veggie shop located right here in Ochivarango. They do sell fruits and vegetables, of course, in uh, bulk as well as in smaller portions. They also offer the locals a $5 soup. Now, I think we all can appreciate a good soup, especially in the weather that we have been having all over Namibia. Uh, they did show us a, they did show us around a bit, uh, so stay tuned for those snippets. And secondly, in our new segment, we headed over to the African Home Deco Shop, uh, which is a deco shop also located right here in Ochivarango, uh, where they do basically um, make almost majority of their furniture, starting from their couches to even mattresses to pillows to headboards. You know what? You name it. And I think the African Home Deco Shop can make it for you. Uh, we also did have a chat with um, Hamdi Sad, who is the owner of the shop, uh, but we will hear from him a bit later in the interview segment. But for now, stay tuned for some of the snippets to see who they are and what they have to offer. This is a metal Secondly, in our new segment, we also spoke to the owner of the African Home Deco Shop, who is Hamti Sad, and he had quite a lot to tell us about uh, the shop and, you know, who they are, what they offer, and where they all started. So stay tuned for that. My name is Hamdi. I live here in Ocho for a long time for here for African Home Deco. As he started in 2015. And uh, we have furniture here, we make it ourselves. We start like also this, this year also we start with a sofa, L-shaped sofa in the kitchen, in a hardboard, in a drawer. And because uh, before us was important, like right now as you make it here, and this is good, as you make it here you have more employees now, more people can lend the people also to do this job here. And also the customer come of the can you come with the customer, can you come with the design and make for him also. And our price also is good because he start already from the beginning of the year for the sofa and he sell maybe more than 10 or 12. And the customer is happy with our job. In the hardboard also any customer you want for design and you have a mat and you have a kitchen stuff also. And as is busy also now, I'm busy also now for the bed. I start now making bed also and all that. Because the good also for us, you do the job here in inside Namibia. You give more people work and also this job also, you lean the people and you start like in, our job is not like, uh, it's not yet high professional like another shop yet. Like in at least 
is coming step by step. In all hope so, the people can come support us, can us push ourselves forward. Thank you. The Agenda is a weekly national affairs interview program hosted every Sunday by Namibian Sun editor Toivon Jabela, featuring a panel of high-profile newsmakers, analysts and experts. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact agenda at synergy.com.na. The Agenda, focus on today's conversation. Well, viewers, uh, welcome to our interview segment. Well, first in our interview segment, we did speak to Nande Ruben, who is one of the owners of the Elitra Fruit and Veggie Shop. Uh, so stay tuned for what he had to say. My name is Nande Ruben, and uh, I'm one of the owners here at uh, Elitra Veggies. Elitra Veggies is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a small, it's a, it's a small business whereby we sell. Um, uh, Basically, uh, fruits and vegetables, man. and uh, um, all kinds of veggies. Okahanya and Sunny pleasant and mild during the day and night this week. Ochevrongo and Tumeb are sunny and beautiful with mild temperatures. Krotfontein is sunny and pleasant with a low nighttime temperature of 3 expected on Friday, although it will warm up a little thereafter. Finally, Okakarara is sunny and pleasant during the day, but icy at night. Stay warm. We can prevent violence against women before it happens. It means tackling the root causes of violence, working with men and boys to end power over women, which is often normalized and justified. Transforming these root causes and preventing violence needs political commitment and leadership, laws and policies that promote gender equality, investments in women's organizations and resources for prevention work. But prevention also starts with you. You can start by educating yourself. Speak out when you get a chance. Advocate for survivors' rights and always listen to survivors. Preventing violence against women and girls before it actually happens is the most effective way of ending it. So let's start now. The Evening Review is a daily interview-based talk show that dissects and expounds on current affairs as they occur in Namibia. The show aims at reaching Namibians of all age groups who seek better understanding of the state of current affairs in the country. This show is broadcasted on NTV, OneUp2.com and cross-shared on the following Facebook platforms, Namibian Sun and Namibia Media Holdings. The Evening Review focuses on interviews, latest news and up-to-the-minute current events. 
Contact evening at synergy.com.na. Evening Review, unpacking today's pertinent issues. Wow, viewers, that is it from me on today's episode of the Regional Review. I will see you guys again next week. Same time, same place.